Hello and welcome to my video tutorial series here in the help desk software and technical support series and I want to thank you for joining along and I hope you will find this video helpful I also want to let you know you can continue to watch my videos and give feedback if you like a brief overview for this lesson is that we are going to discuss the impact that technology such as the internet our email, instant messaging, chat, and knowledge management systems have had on the service desk industry in terms of how it collects information and delivers support. We're also going to discuss how these changes have prompted the need for support professionals to add technical writing to their list of required skills in their IT tool bag. We're also going to describe the characteristics of good technical writing and provide a few tips and techniques to help support providers improve their overall technical writing skills. Let's take a look at the areas that we will discuss in this lecture. We'll talk about the impact of technology on the service desk as well as its customers, the customer, or I'm sorry, the role of the service desk analyst in a technology centric world. We all know that here in the 21st century, it is definitely a technology-centric world. Next, we'll talk about the most common documents that are used by service desks to convey its information. Next, we'll discuss the characteristics of good technical writing. And then we will conclude with proven techniques to improve your overall technical writing skills. Let's go ahead and dive into the first area of conversation that is again the impact of technology on the service desk and its customers. Here in the 21st century there have been dramatic changes that have affected how technical support organizations collect their information and deliver their support services. All of these have prompted the need for technical writing skills of the support professionals. When it comes to technical writing I've used that term loosely this is simply writing documentation that explains technical issues in ways that those non-technical people can understand. Take in mind that the fact that telephone, the internet, email, instant messaging, and chat technologies all play a role in customer support in today's society. As we move into the future, there's no single technology that seems that it will replace all of the others. Now let's take a look at the role of the service desk analyst in a technology centric world. If you think about it, historically customers either used the phone to call or they simply walked into the service desk when they needed assistance or some information. Today we have many other channels that we use that I've mentioned before, email, chat, uh, even those self-service portals via the old interweb. These all are all easy technologies that are at our fingertips to be able to bring our customers to the service desk. These are now how we have the ability to interact with human being rather than doing that face-to-face -face contact. And with email, this provides us the ability to send very detailed information. Those web-based services I talked about provide us the ability to perform functions and the ability to interact with analysts such as with chat. So all of these technologies are important in that they extend, extend our service desk ability to gather, organize, and utilize that information. As analysts we are expected on a daily basis to log tickets, document solutions to problems, develop procedures for our support staff as well as our end users and to exchange information in a way that can be easily used by our customers, perhaps our managers, as well as our coworkers. As a result of this, writing skills and keyboarding proficiency are important assets in the service desk. You need to be able to convey the information in a timely manner and it needs to be easily understood. Now those that are more proficient at quickly capturing accurate and consistent data and as well as having good writing and keyboarding skills may find that they are given a wider range of responsibilities and offered greater opportunities. Maybe you, your skills are easily evident by your manager and rather than just doing a lot of service desk calls, you're doing a lot of the technical writing and 
using those skills to the best of your abilities and thus making the environment at your work much better than maybe what you walked into. It is not at all surprising now that some companies require candidates to submit a writing sample to look for those writing and those communication skills. You will probably come across individuals in an environment or in your organization that seem to have an old type of perception that they don't have time to document what they do. They're just used to fixing the incident and moving on to the next incident. Documentation and having those technical writing skills are imperative in today's support industry. Something key to remember here is that when used effectively, technology empowers both the customers and us as service desk analysts. But if it's used improperly, technology can frustrate everyone involved and unfortunately it can alienate our customers. Out of all the technologies that we are using at the service desk, one of the most important is creating knowledge base articles or documents. Knowledge base documents are very critical in how we handle things and how we can handle things in the future. If you are in an organization that does not have knowledge bases, please make it a point to get those implemented and introduced into your organization. And knowledge base is a very loose term, but very few of us and companies have the resources to recreate solutions, recreate those problems to train to those solutions by having, oh, this is a problem we experienced. All right, we're going to introduce this to everyone. Oh, and then we have some turnover. And now we got to do the training again. No, having the knowledge base, whether it's uh, built using some type of sophisticated technology such as into your ticket system, or it can simply be a collection of e-documents. Um, even some email systems have the ability to create articles or documents in them as well and certain groups only have permissions to be able to view those. But Some of those resources we can include are notes, uh, web links or internet sites, online help manuals, maybe some e-documents that are created that can be attached there, step-by-step uh, -step, uh, recordings. All of these things can be created in a knowledge base article so that when someone else comes across this situation they can come to the solution much quicker or even provide that information to a customer to help guide them through a solution to their problem. Now let's move on to the next topic which is the most common documents used by service desks to convey information. Now the sheer amount of writing that's done by individual service desk analysts is obviously going to vary from one company to another. But the number of documents are common to all service desks. And some of those common service desk uh, documents that I've already kind of mentioned and some others are tickets. We all have to deal with service tickets, email messages. In the 21st century, email messages are up at the top of the list. IM or chat messages. IM does stand for instant messaging in case you did not know that. FAQs or frequently asked questions. As I just mentioned, knowledge management system solutions. Another common service document is blogs, depending on your organization. Scripts, reports obviously are another, and then procedures are, I'll end out the list with procedures as one of those common service desk documents. Now with tickets, these are typically logged electronically at the time that an incident or a service request is received. Make sure in the IT world you know the difference between an incident and a request or a service. Those tickets that are well written are going to provide us information that other analysts and service providers need to handle quickly. Service tickets also give us a historical accounting of steps taken to solve an incident. Whenever you do something when you're handling a ticket, make sure to update the ticket so that that historical count is recorded. As an analyst, you should clearly record all the information the customer provides you as well as all the steps taken to diagnose and resolve the incident or situation. And there's many different ticketing platforms out there, some better than others. 
Some are a lot more costly. You might have heard of like Remedy. You might come across uh, Sysaid. You might uh, have used Spiceworks. And there are many different types. Not, you're not going to find an industry standard because everyone adopts what's best to their organization. Above all in tickets, accuracy is the most important feature. Having that, any type of inaccuracies can make it appear that a ticket has missed a service level agreement or perhaps you come to an escalation because it was not entered correctly such as the date that you did something was inaccurate then that might escalate the ticket even though that it was just a simple typo. Make sure that you're very accurate in your tickets. In today's world our customers have more of an ability to check the status of outstanding tickets and they can see exactly what we're putting in so we need to be careful we need to be specific and not put any type of fluff or personal information in there like your personal feeling about the customer that does happen and it's usually a bad day for that customer service analyst in the case that we have to escalate a ticket to like tier 2 or tier 3 there is another area in which accuracy is extremely important because we are going to have another service desk analyst be able to look at that to help try to diagnose and solve incidents and we want to make sure that everything is accurate in that. When you're writing email messages make sure that you're clear and concise as possible and always try to convey a positive friendly tone to the intended recipient. Uh, provide as much as information that's needed and not a bunch of excess. If you're forwarding an email, make sure that if it's getting to be a lengthy email, only keep what's relevant. If you know it's 20 messages long, discard a lot of those messages so that person isn't continuously reading through that. Always when you're writing email messages, anticipate there to be some follow-up questions a customer may ask as well as they may volunteer information. You may need to volunteer more information. I am in chat messages form a digital record of that communication. They may be recorded, they may be stored. Uh, a lot of times these are used by managers to see how their support staff are handling situations. Make sure that you understand the company's policy when it comes to chat. A lot of times when we're using I am or chat messages, this is another area where me, we may have a script that pops up that walks us through how to respond in those and I'm sure you've probably come across that if you've ever tried to use online technical support. Frequently asked questions are those well written answers the most common questions you'll see if you go to like a products site you will probably see an FAQ section to help answer some of those basic questions that are always asked and this just helps provide a basic self-service for the customers to be able to answer their own or get the answers without having to contact live support. If we talk a little bit about uh, blogs, it depends on the industry if you're ever going to see blogs, but this is really just a digital journal that's kept out on the internet. Uh, typically these are updated pretty frequently if a blogger is active and this will display entries in not the way that they're they're completed but in a reverse chronological order make sure you're careful with these but if you are doing blogs an effective blog are based on a simple strategy and aimed at a specific target audience we've already talked enough about scripts as I said these enable the uh, creation of effectiveness and because we have a specific purpose and we know who our audience is and we just use those to keep everything simple. You'll see reports of various kinds uh, and you may be required to create reports or you may need to implement those. Make sure that you are using proper uh, techniques for consistency. If it's a report that's going to be out every month, make sure you're consistent and not changing the way it looks every month. Uh, procedures may be used by customers they may be used by the internal support organization or maybe even within the organization and a procedure is just a step-by-step -step detailed set of instructions that describe how to perform various tasks in a certain process so that's another one of those uh, common service desk documents and 
Now that we've talked about all those, let's talk about the characteristics of good technical writing. Generally, when it comes to good technical writing, do your research or use what's readily available to you in your organization to be consistent. Of all those types of documents that I already covered, each of those has their own characteristics of how they should be written. A procedure is not going to be written in the same way that a FAQ is or an IM message. Make sure you do the research to see what is the best practice of technical writing for those individual documents. And if you're in an organization and you notice that maybe they're not using the best the best techniques for that, bring that up with whoever the document owners are or whoever's in charge of those documents. If they need to be changed, make sure you go through the proper channels. Just make sure that you have examples and it's, this is another area where having templates are always great to have when it comes to technical writing. Now let's move on to the last topic over proven techniques to improve your writing skills. Definitely keep in mind that well written materials are simpler to comprehend, provided needed information, and leave a good impression to the reader. As you continue to write more and more technical documents, you're obviously going to become better writers and it's going to become easier the more you do. Pay attention when you're reading things so that you can help employ those skills into your own writing. There are obviously different ways you can go about becoming better, improving your skills such as taking classes or finding various uh, materials to reference, uh, even videos. You can use, you know, as an example, Grammarly.com is a way to help become a better writer because it will help you pick up those little things that you don't notice as you're typing or as you're writing. So make sure that you employ different avenues for improving your writing skills. Um, you know, if you're doing a video, create a narrative that you can, or a script. If you are giving a presentation and, or you need to create a document, don't just create it once and put it out there. Be specific and always, always, always avoid jargon. If you're going to use jargon or technical terms or acronyms, make sure you define them first before you use them. If you're going to be using, creating a document and you're going to use USB, make sure that you define the universal serial bus. Make sure that you tell the intended recipient what the acronym is before you use it before you ever release a document. Make sure you check your grammar, check your punctuation, check your spelling, check for your accuracy. Make sure that your tone is consistent. Make sure your verb usage is consistent. In most cases, you always want to use the present tense unless it specifically needs to be a past tense in case you're describing a situation that occurred. Make sure you use active voice in your technical writing. One of the most important things that some people seem to skip over is knowing their audience. Know your audience. Determine the skill, the education level, the technical level of your intended readers. And the reader should understand your main ideas very clearly. You should have transitional statements going from one topic to another. Uh, as I said, define technical terms the first time you use them. and Try to know how much information your reader wants as well as how much information do they need. Maybe you need separate documentation for different readers. I'll leave you with this last note that regardless, be consistent. If you have inconsistencies in your writing, this is going to create confusion. We don't want to create confusion. We want to instill confidence in our users or in our audience make sure that you instill that confidence you're consistent and you practice all of these writing skills and you should be on your way to becoming a more proficient technical writer so make sure that you are practicing those technical writing skills as a support professional